All right. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a good Tuesday, wherever you are. And hope you have been able to do some hobbying, be it gaming or painting or sculpting or whatever you do. Still early into 2022, thinking about projects to work on. Hey, hey, Jiang Lai. So uh, for, today, for today's stream, I will be working on the Gurion. And those are these huge mutated giants or gigants from Euripides keyword, from the Savage keyword. And the plan for them is to, for today, is to work on two of them simultaneously. So those are the two guys that I will be working on. Not at the same time, just taking turns in working on both. Because one of the main challenges when working on larger miniatures is that they are they can be intimidating because there is a lot of flat surfaces uh, flat well not that well textured so you need to have a plan on how to spread the colors the highlights there and what i want to do today is to start with a general overbrush then work with some glazes i have my hair dryer handy to speed things up and then focus on the details, faces, etc. And then I will be working with oils because oils have this wonderful capabilities that enable some, hey there, my bluff. Oils, all, oils are just great enablers when it comes to painting. They can speed things up, they can add extra depth to the model and it's not that complex. It's not that difficult. You just need a strategy for that. So this is the other one. Those are the ones that I painted, well, over a year ago, I believe. And what I want to finish with, once the oils are dry, is to give them a bit more saturation. Because if you look at the backside, there are different nuances to the skin tone. For example, it's partly white, slightly bluish, a hint of green here some purple in the deeper in the armpit section. So this is what I want to achieve today. Uh, also do some base work. And there is also some red skin, like this skin that has been stretched too far by, well, three heads popping up uh, from your neck that must make the skin look really bad. So this is the plan. And this is the other one, just for reference. Also, while working on that, I made sure to keep the shades much, much darker and go to much, much brighter color. Also, here working on work on those mutated parts to make them stand out a bit more. But those are really horrible miniatures. These look like some kind of nasty cancerous growth mutation. Well, you name it. They are not that huge. They are in game. They are quite big. I think they are size three. Correct me if I'm wrong, but compared to, a, let's say, a standard human, just to take one for reference, here is a standard human model. They aren't much, much larger, right? This is the Fitzsimmons, and that's why, in order to make these more fitting with the Savage keyword, which consists of Euripides and his gigants, I've used slightly elevated bases. And I did the same thing here. Just I sculpted them with milliput, then pinned the miniatures to them. Well, the miniatures, it sounds funny when you talk about gigants and miniatures, but it is what it is. So I'm thinking maybe it would be easier if I don't use the paint holders. The base holders should make it a bit easier. So let's give it a go. And this will enable me to have better control when I show them to the camera. And I also come prepared with a new brush, which is uh, which has a really thick bristle, which absorbs a lot, a lot of paint. And this is good for working with contrasts and other paints of this type. And what I will start with is a technical paint from Citadel. It's called Nighthound Bloom. I believe that this is the one that's the default for those ghostly 
figures, the white faction, whatever it is. Not that familiar with GW stuff, but uh, the paint is quite good because it gets this deep, dark, saturated look. And this is what I will start on with the skin. But before I do that, I will do the same thing I do on always when I have this muted white color. I will give it an overbrush with brighter shade just to pick up some details. So starting with Ivory, which is an off-white color from AK47, my new go-to range of paints that I kind of discovered because there's this painter, a very good painter that shows his works uh, at the word place and the nickname is Brush Warrior. You might remember some of the works done by this artist with those highly atmospheric Zoraida Cruz or Cadmus. And he once shared on Facebook something about this company. And I thought, well, why don't I give it a go? So I ordered a few to give them a try and, well, haven't put them down really since then because they have the right consistency. They come in convenient dropper bottles. So all the things that I like about paints. So after giving them a quick shake, I can just paint straight from the bottle. No need to use mediums to dilute them or anything like that. So here I'm just giving a light overbrush to pick up some of the details so that the washes will have a better impact. By better impact, I mean they will be the, the protruding elements, so the, the well-defined elements such as cheekbones, lips, and those spikes on the back won't be that much affected by the glaze, whereas the ones in the recesses will be much, much darker after applying the first wash. This one actually has some nice texture on the, well, the main head area. That's what I would say. Because if you have a three, well, if you're in a three head combination, then, well, hard to decide which one do you use for communication. And if I think about this guy, just to show the painted one, the kind of sound it must make while communicating it must be utterly utterly horrible can't really think of like what could it sound like like a clogged bathtub that you try to unclog and some loud death metal music playing in the background while a uh, wrecking ball is demolishing your house that's the kind of sound that they probably make when they communicate And those are generally, there isn't much fluff behind them. Those are, well, some gigants that stayed in the mountainous areas with Euripides. And then they answered the call from Titania, got down from the mountains, and were battle ready. So now that I have them, I think I will actually do the bases first and this time I'm not doing them in the most standard way that I do which is basilic and gray I will rather use maybe I will use since they do not have any purples in them maybe I will use fire slayer flesh it's a contrast paint that I rarely ever use so I will put it because it's this dark skin tone, I will put it on the base and take it from there. So putting it directly from the pot, don't need to dilute them anyway. I want to have this rich brownish soil look because that will nicely contrast with the light 
pale skin that I will skin tone that I will be using on them. And speaking of mountains and snow, yesterday when I was at work at the office, I saw the most bizarre thing. Well, it was kind of scary. It looked like apocalypse coming to Warsaw because simultaneously we had, well, we experienced thunderstorm with lightning and rumbling loud thunder and a blizzard and no rain. So there was this snow blizzard. It was white everywhere. You could barely see anything except lightning and hearing the sound of thunder. So that was that was very intense. But shortly, fortunately. But in some areas of the country, there was ma there was massive damage, power outages everywhere, especially in the ru rural areas where wind is installed by large buildings and hits trees and houses with full force. So I guess the planet doesn't like what people have been doing to it for decades and has it say that well, guys, about time to consider how far you want to push the resources, the planet capacity to feed you. Come to think of it, the catastrophic movies don't seem that much science fi that science fiction as they seemed a couple of years ago, which well, which isn't a good thing. So I will, I'm working on two of them just to keep things more interesting. And also my goal for today's stream is to show you guys how to just approach painting such large miniatures and use fairly simple steps to overcome the hurdles that you may perceive when you look at this large chunk of meat. Because if you, well, of course, you can take it very slow and just highlight it section by section, foot by foot, arm by arm, face by face, and it can take ages. But I want to have a, I want to have a good effect after those three hours, or just get the majority of the work done on these two. Well. But it's not like I will be spending only three hours of to complete the miniature from from unboxing to fully painted because there's still well I, I did spend a quite a bit on assembling them and at some point blurby dirt yeah that's what it is and also what I want to achieve with them is to then use oils so oil paints to fine-tune the shades and highlights on the skin so that's it for the core of the base and also one day in the future maybe in the next stream that's a possibility because at some point I want to spend one stream just focusing on the core aspects of the hobby. So the miniature assembly, how to remove the gaps, because if you don't do it the right way, then there are huge gaps when you assemble those miniatures. And those are fairly easy to put together. They are like a 3D puzzle. You don't really need instructions because everything fits so well that you can use it just intuitively. But having said that, it takes some practice to make sure that you put them together in a way that you ensure the gaps after the assembly left and left after the assembly are not that visible. You want to keep them well as minimal as possible. Because it really ruins the effect. 
because no matter how awesome the paint job is, the recesses will still be much, much darker. Well, hello, Nightbot. Sounds like well the Nightbot. And speaking of Waldo, and that immediately brings to my mind and makes me think of the news shared by Word earlier today. Go check out their preview of January releases. So you can see the 3D renders of newly released stuff. Pretty cool stuff there with nice atmospheric music. Kind of exciting that it's almost like a new game now with so many new releases. So now the other one just working using a fairly big brush because those finger those toes are really huge and there is no need for a smaller one it's easy to pick each toes individually to pick them up pick them out what i meant so using the rave bone color just to re-establish re the based on and once that's in place i can start working with glazes as you can see the brownish color kind of spreads here into the rest of the skin area which is fine by me because i i want it to be slightly darker closer to the base i will be using some dry pigments in the end just to re-establish it anyway and here having well slightly darker paint i can just go over the recesses once again it seems like the base coat that I applied in spray didn't catch very well in the deepest recesses from certain angles. And if you don't have a base coat on, if you have pure plastic, then the paint just doesn't hold up. And you need to put the extra effort just to make sure you have a well prepared surface to work with it's like for me this stage is like when i think of it it's like preparing your canvas only this canvas is three-dimensional and has three nasty hats but it's a canvas so if you don't prime your canvas well if, it, if it's not evenly spread then you have a challenge to control how you apply colors onto it. Cheers, guys. Here's my yerba handy. My drink of choice to keep me energized in those late night hours i mean it's not late night hour it's just 9 pm here so just uh i start my painting sessions later than that so it's early into the night for me I typically paint between 10 and midnight and past midnight if i feel like i'm in the good groove to continue so giving a good shake to Night Home Gloom. And I will dilute it, of course, because it's, it's fairly dark. And what I do, as you know very well already, if you've watched any of my streams before, just test it on the sheet of paper and as you can see it's it's really dark so and, and i don't want it that dark so i will take some of it out put it on my handy mixing base 
then I will put a few drops of Lamia medium. Five drops should be enough. It's like 50-50 paint and drop Lamia medium. But I'm going to switch to a larger brush in a second. So this one is not needed right now. And I will now move to my go-to brush for applying contrasts. This is the one. It's really thick. It absorbs a lot. And it's just a bit easier to control the application process. So moving with the chubby one, the angry meatball, potato, whatever you call it just look like a mean mass of everything. And what I tend to do with contrast paint when I have it diluted with mixing medium, with lamian medium or retarder medium, however, whatever you use for thinning down the paint and making sure it doesn't dry too fast, I tend to apply it generously well i just put too much of it on the miniature and then i spread it on the model rather than going back back and forth between a mixing pot and the miniature i may end up putting two layers or using contrast to enhance further but for now it looks like a, well it looks dirty and as you can see, this big brush with really thick bristles really helps. Just speeds, th speeds things up so much. And at the same time, I want to just slow down, rotate the model, make sure that all the white spots get the proper wash. So this is like sketching. If I had a different type of model which would require more colors, then I would just tackle the main areas and block the main colors in. For this one, you, having this kind of semi-transparent glaze, it, it will allow me to further use different types of contrast paints to saturate desaturate keep the area darker or brighter well you name it and those spikes well they will take a while but i will need to repeat all of them every single one of them with white color or off white and use probably a much brighter shade of blue for painting them it depends on where i end up with the main color of the skin if it's very if it turns out very bright i'll just keep them darker but for now the way i plan it the way i envision it is to keep the skin pale so maybe some more vibrant blue will be a good choice and as you can see if, if yeah if i rotate then i just discover the areas that are still white that's why it's so important to just move the model around and while i have a hair dryer handy i suppose i will just apply the same Thing to the other one and then the first one should be dry 
by the time I finish the second one. That's the plan. I see that the nice thing about painting Neverborn beasts or monsters or horrors is that there is no cookie cutter solution. It's like with Skinton, you know, if you are, well, if you know the, if you are more in depth in the aspect of Call of Fury, you know that there are different zones of color on the face, like the green zone, the red zone. But in general terms, you know that which areas tend to be darker, which tend to be brighter, which look natural. And because when, while painting human skin, you strive to get this more or less natural effect. If you don't want it to pink, it's too dark. Hey, dog. Good day to you. And with Neverborn, you can just go crazy. You don't need to limit yourself to any kind of reference. You just have more freedom to to use unusual saturation of color or place uh, highlights in a way that you would never consider while working on humans. So that's why, in a nutshell, that's why I like working with humanoid but non-human models. So thinning it down a little bit because I noticed that it started getting a bit too thick. Those huge fists, really nicely, nicely designed models. I mean, they are horrible and awful, but the design here is it's quite impressive. I don't think there is another model in the range that that is so ridiculous. Well, maybe what's the name of this? Ice cream eating zombie Archie. Archie from the Resurrectionist. He's he's an oddball too. And then I also spoke with with Kimberly before the before the stream started and she pointed out that well the insidious madness are also quite ridiculous. And that's a fair point. Because with insidious madness you just can't really identify what's going on there, whether it's a leg, whether it's a tentacle, do they float, do they crawl, do they walk, what's how they breathe, do they breathe? Those are just absolutely nightmarish creations. <clears throat> So some more color on the leg and again, just, just the sketch. I played Euripides several times and it's, uh, there's a steep learning curve to playing Euripides. I think I lost my first five or six games when I used him because there is this temptation to just go and dive into the action. And the, in general terms, the keyword is heavy hitting, but doesn't have that much of staying power. So it's, you don't want them in the thick of things. You need to be really clever with, with maneuvering. So the, oh, you want to learn him back. That's cool. That's cool. I think that the unpack phase is really challenging because you can just block yourself. Those are mainly miniatures on 40 millimeter bases. So, we, well, there is some maneuverability with the totem, the primordial magic that can, it can make things, well, you can just disregard other models and move through terrain. You, you, because one model per turn can be made incorporeal for the duration of the turn 
and this can lead to funny situations where you have a model that is incorporeal and that receives shielded at the end of the turn when it ends its activation near an ice pillar and it's really difficult to put down such model if you put it let's say on foon which is my favorite model from the keyword it's really hard to take him down because he's got incorporeal so damage reduction shielded damage reduction and the ability to use soul stones so one more aspect of damage reduction plus he's a serious threat because he just takes a model out and if you misposition your models where you don't have if you play against Euripides and you just send someone to have a one-on-one -on -one with Thun, well, regardless of how huge the damage output is, the damage output is Thun can just keep them in an ice pillar. He has this trigger that he can stun for, of course. So Thun is cool, no pun intended. And you repeat this, I typically I would say that if I take a Cyclops, then I put one Ice Pillar ahead, then teleport you repeat this next to it and just nuke, nuke the hell out of my opponents with Ice Pillars because you can put six of them with you repeat this if you position things well. Each one causes a pretty heavy walk test that they need to pass, otherwise they get too damage. So if you also position it in a good way, then you really seriously hamper the movement of the of the opponent and limit their options. Although typically when people face Euripides, they will take someone with blow it to hell. So the ability to just get rid of all markers within the range. So not that great. But also there are some other great models to be used with Euripides. One is Black Blood Shaman. You can give a focus, a point of focus to all your models since you generally start in a bubble. So you give one focus, then the next turn you give another focus to whoever stays behind and you turn into Mature Nephilim and you just go to town. I also like to use Candy with Euripides. Because it's a surprisingly mobile crew, because you can just use the trigger from Gigants and shove another model into Ice Pillar and teleport it to really far out. And then if you teleport Candy far out, then she can be a nuisance from turn one. So she can be in the middle of your opponent's ranks and just cause all kinds of chaos there. Let me take one more mixing base. Maybe 40 mil will do. So Candy is a good choice, besides she can heal. And she's a pain, whichever crew you have her in. If you play against her, she's a, she's a lot of pain. So now I'll make another mix for working further with the skin. And I will use these two. So Griff Charger Gray and Tenebris Blue, which is this super intense blue. I didn't use the Garion that much because I just I need one gigant to teleport things. I need one Cyclops. I need Garion. Uh, uh, not Garion, I need Thun. I definitely need the Damned when I play Euripides. Can't really go wrong with the Damned. He's like this first mate, only cannot use Soulstone. So not as good as first mate, but probably the best scheme runner option. Because he can leap where he wants to be. Then I, what else do I need? Bolton Ginner can be a low key, nice choice. I typically take a Wicked Doll, which, due to its stealth, 
makes things more difficult in the first two turns at least. Like if you want him to for corrupted ley lines, if you want him to carry the potato, he can do it quite efficiently. And uh, after that, there just isn't much flex left because I want plenty of soul stones, like seven or nine with Euripides is a good pink number because he wants he wants Tom's. The crew is generally Tom hungry. They need Tom's to be efficient. They need Tom's to teleport things. They need Tom's to create ice pillars, to drop them. Okay, that's better. So the mix is ready and I'm quite happy with the color. So now it will get much, much darker and it will look all kind of gunky and dark. And uh, that's why the Solston, big Solston cache is quite crucial there. You, you will notice that I just spread it so that uh, most protruding, the, well, where the knee should be, stays brighter. I just push the paint into the recesses. And uh, the Garion, they have, they are beaters. They just wreck face with their fists. That's in a nutshell what they do. But they are more than that. They have some decent mobility with their shoulder rush. And they also remove ice pillars. So if you end up in a position where you're facing Neverborn as a Neverborn player, then just take Garion out of keyword because Garion can with a zero action he can just remove all the ice pillars within I believe four inches or three inches well he's on a 50 millimeter base so that's quite a big range and then when he removes them he also heals and he if you leave at least once if you position it right he also gets shielded so there is some merit into taking him as out of keyword choice. Not the obvious one, but there isn't really much you can do. Well, as a Neverborn player, you can go with Dreamer and use incorporeal models uh, or summon models. You can use Nakima or Titania and have models that fly and move over the pillars, but Garion is also a really good beater. Plus he has this extended reach, so he cannot be charged. Which takes people off guard. So quite a quite a package, I would say. Is the for at first at face value, it's just a beater. A face wrecker. But the deeper you dig, the, the more you read into the card, the more options you just discover. So I'm already liking the color that I have here. It's becoming much more saturated, gritty type of blue. I think I apart from using oil paints in the final stage i will use some stippling on the skin just to keep this looking rough it's not a healthy skin if you just consider the kind of mutations like birthing another set of hats how much of a stretch mark it would leave so now i'm just going back and forth and removing the excess of paint in areas where I feel like I've over flooded it because once it dries, the pool looks bad. But before it dries, I have time to just absorb it, remove it. And then if I feel like it, I can always bring the shade back. Just don't want a thick layer of 
wash drying in one area because then it's it looks messy but then the so those are i would say the strengths of Euripides are the it's a it can be highly disruptive crew it can make your opponent's life miserable if the terrain is if for example your opponent starts in a corner and there are two large buildings or rocks that they need to go between and if you fill that space with ice pillars then you just make them their life miserable if they don't have the right models the right tech to remove the pillars i think only neverborn and resurrection is do not have a model that has this blow it to hell or some variety of this ability so for never for resource it could be a decent choice although resource have like Kira and she has so many incorporeal models that she doesn't really care molly can remove markers and draw cards so she can remove three markers per turn so that means that she doesn't do anything else but her crew is quite can be quite independent if you build it right so my main problem with euripides or the main challenge that i see is that he just doesn't soak up manage soak up damage that well and yes you can take candy or serena bowman but you need to keep them very close to him and apart from soul stones there isn't much of defensive tech well speaking of euripides one right the first version he doesn't get this ability that he gets shielded one and heal one if he ends up next to a pillar so that's one thing then the other thing is that his size was well, size four i believe which means any kind of sniper can just low-key ping him to death i had a game against mataket and there were two of these bushwalkers and they deploy further from their zone they have stealth so they were a huge problem for me those are not the kind of models that can turn a game when you think of them but for me it was some constant pain that they ended up pinging him to death so if you if the if assassinate is in the pool well i would reconsider if you plan to take Euripides because he just goes down at the end of the day you just have soul stones to keep him alive and it's not a re reliable resource because there is this random aspect of how much damage you mitigate <clears throat> but Euripides can be surprisingly mobile he has this shattering surprise so he can teleport he's great for symbols of authority because he can just travel across the whole board and pick out a symbol by himself which is maybe not a great thing to, for him to do but if you damn this busy doing other things then Euripides can do the schemes or the strategies And also the for some where if you want to build a castle then the gigants have this ability to that you need to destroy a marker before you can make an interact action next to it so that just that can cause all kinds of problems they can throw boulders over without needing line of sight if they discard a card and one thing I really haven't mentioned, maybe it's too obvious, is the old ways, which is an amazing ability. If you are a bit lucky, then it can it can be hugely impactful. I had a situation in which I had a Thun 
and the player controlling Martak had won the initiative. Smacked Thun once. I played Red Joker. Well, so he figured, well, I, I will smack Thun again. And I just said, well, I'm using ancient ways, the old, the old ways, to flip the Red Joker again for one damage. So I won another duel. And I just got, he just landed one attack, which didn't do that much to Thun. So if you, well, you have a lot of maneuverability, like you can discard a severe card with your Gigant and use it for attack flip. So you discard a card to ignore line of sight, and then you just know that the model that was feeling safe is no longer safe. That's why it's good to have focus on them. That's why Black Blood Shamans are so good. So the, the problem with constructing of crew is that there are just a number of options. But at the same time, well, they have hard to kill, which is great because you won't kill them in one swing unless you can ignore this ability. But if you just ping them, they will go down because they don't have high defense value. So it's fairly easy to land a hit. That's why I think when building and crew, you need to consider some out of keyword option for just for more versatility. So the color is drying. It's looking better and better. It's already fairly dark in the recesses. Much brighter on the flat surfaces that are out. And I think I've re-established, I've established a firm base to work with. So my win-lose record with Euripides isn't impressive at all, but then none of my win-lose rec records are impressive. Maybe with the right that's closer to positive. And I haven't played him for a while. But of course, there is this. The main reason I picked, I even picked up the keyword is the the quality or the awesomeness of the models themselves, because those are some of the most impressive models in the range. I mean, once you paint them, they look just amazing, and they look great on the board. You have this family of monstrosities that just march forward. So I will speed up things a little bit at this point and use the hair dryer. So apologies for the noise in advance. Hope my cat doesn't mind. The cat isn't happy about the noise, but you will survive. I just noticed the white spot underneath that I need to look into. And while the miniature is still warm from the hair dryer, the paint just affects it in a different way because it dries so quickly. So you can do lots of different things with this approach, when you heat up the miniature, then the painting experience is quite different. 
Welcome back, Doug. How is the preparation for the big tournament? I actually listened to a podcast with you in, so did a good job there. Of, I mean, if I if only I left like a couple thousand kilometers closer, then I would be definitely putting my name on the wait list for the event. But sadly, I'm just too many thousands of kilometers away to be seriously considering it. And besides traveling from Europe to, to the States these days with all the restrictions in place, it's just, well, not really an option. Oh, you got more space. That's good news. So how many people are you looking to accommodate? Oh, yeah, it was fun. It uh, sounded like you were having fun. Uh, up to 27 that's that's a lot of people uh, one thing I well one of the things I like about rage quit wire is that how seamlessly these guys switch between off topic and content it's just absolutely seamless and they are the well they know their fault so Always good to listen to some people with experience and exposure to different situations. And they are also quite good with release schedule because they publish stuff regularly. So now that we are about an hour into the stream, I think I will start to looking into adding a bit more variety to the skin maybe some browns well or some greens or some purples so i will go ahead and pick up a purple shade intensity ink sacra purple It looks like it's blocked, but some paint has dried in, which is not great, but I can remove it while I'm at it. Ooh, looks nasty. Sometimes those, maybe I didn't twist it properly when I stopped using it the last time. But now it should be unclogged for the next use. So I will put some of the purple and more of lamin medium, which I'm running out of. So about time I restock on it. When you paint larger miniatures, it tends to run low quickly. So now it's kind of soft, so I don't want it very dense. I want it just to lightly impact some of the recesses, some of the areas from below. And I'm, if I had an airbrush, if I was an airbrush user, I would be painting with airbrush from below. But since I don't have one, I'm painting with this purple mix from below, just to build up the more diversified structure of colors. Just to make sure that when I start putting in highlights, 
there are there is some variety beneath. So doing quick round on both just to establish a bit of diversity in the color scheme. I will now push a bit of red to those areas that look like they could be affected by stretch marks on the skin. And again, maybe I'll just thin it down with water to make sure I don't run out of my lamin medium, should I need it. So when I look at the model for the stretch marks, like this one, though they are clearly defined here, so I'll just push in a bit of red into the recesses here. Let it just flow there. Let it sit there for a while so that it tints the area around this fold of skin and then I will remove excess from the brush and pick it up so that the area is tinted with red it just makes it look more interesting otherwise you have this large skin section looks like a beetle from the back no wonder they are so angry because wouldn't you be angry if you were forced to grow uh, another set of heads and your whole body was a bulging mass of muscles, stretch marks and things. On the other one, you can already glimpse some color nuances here. Now I'm just going a bit back and forth between different areas just to make sure that okay so this area maybe I will return to the first one because I want more of this red around those mutated heads. Because this is where the skin suffers the most. I don't know if Garion of or Jerion, however you should pronounce it, but it holds any symbolism in any religion or culture or folklore. But in Malifa, Garion means well this is what it means. It means something big and nasty. And these models in game they have the ability to get back to full health because they are hard to kill so if you don't kill them in, in one go they can reform from ice and be back to full health in no time so if you commit to removing them do it in one turn because a smart player will just end their activation near a bunch of Ice pillar markers, and that's perfect environment for them to get back to full health and become a nuisance again. So now I think I will add some green. So maybe not a very dark green. Maybe black bear flesh would be a good choice here. 
because what I'm looking for here, Greek mythology reference. I thought so. There could more. I think I I did a bit of research on them back in the day. So what I'm going to do on these that I'm working on is also to have this effect where one area is not just one color where there's a hint of green or purple. Gurion mythology. And I just need to look it up. In Greek mythology, Gurion was a free-bodied monster who owned a glorious herd of cattle, stained red from the setting sun. Gurion's main role in Greek mythology is to defend his herd from Hercules, who must steal it as part of his 12 labors. Now that's a cool reference. Free-bodied monster. Well, there are three heads, so there we go. Thank you, Kimberly, for bringing it up. I forgot that specific reference, and that's a flavorful one. So, protector of the herd. These Garion understand protection in the most proactive manner, because they, when they think protect, they think wreck face. So, I like, I really like Black Bear flesh because this is the color that interacts well with blue adding some warmth to it just a touch of it so i will apply it selectively to some areas maybe a bit on the head on the other head on the on the, on the other head so on the knuckles on where the knees should be. And that is definitely a cool reference. The Arimethian boar is another Greek mythology reference to so the new enforcer for Titania crew. That's a cool one because this is the boar that Hercules was also supposed to defeat. And since it's Greek mythology, defeat means slay. And I will just now use the first place that I've used, the first wash that I've used, just the pure color to let it flow into the recesses. So I want them a bit darker. I see some areas coming up which where the paint got shifted in the first stage and it dried off to pure white, which is undesirable at this point. And fun fact, Greek mythology is, a, is on the obligatory reading list if you are educated in Poland. So whether you like it or not, you get to know it. Now for the highlighting process, because I want to move from this not clearly defined mass of everything to this where the brighter spots are clearly defined. This is where inks will come into play. So that's not inks, but the oils. So that's coming still a bit later. So for now, I will rebuild the base coat. Maybe I will just make sure that it's completely dry. just looking at me with utter disgust human slave why you're making such noise so in order to just start building up some highlights 
I will use the night hunt gloom, which is the base color I've used, and I will mix it with skeleton bone. Or some other color if I'm running out of it. Looks like I need to restock on some key paints that I use. All right. This is a bit too thick at this stage, but this is fine. It's not going to be a problem. So I'll just take out. Maybe I'm just hesitating. No, this might be, this might work. I will grab some of it, set it on the palette, mix it in. And I should have this very, very bright color, which will be like tinted with blue, but not blue and not white and not bone white. That's more or less what I had in mind. Maybe I will just add a touch of Griff Charger Blue. Contrast paint, just maybe a dark, darken it slightly. Time for some dry brushing now. It's not, well, it's kind of over brushing where I pick up the details. I will pick out the details to make the fault in the skin. So, taking another tissue, make sure I have a dry one for dry brushing. Getting a brush which should be completely dry. So my big dry brush brush, dry brush brush, it's like a tongue twister, dry brush brush. And we are now into the second hour of the stream. So thanks to those of you who are online following or who just hopped in. Great to have some audience. And I will remove the excess of paint and just start brushing it against in quick swift strokes I don't want it to affect the surface too much I'm looking for more of a build-up so once it dries I will get back and I'm trying not to get too deep so that I don't affect the recesses Focusing like on this muscle here, the form. It's just easy to overdo the dry brush. And once the dry brush starts, the dry brush color, once it starts sliding into the recesses, then you might as well not dry brush at all because it ruins the composition. So swift strokes, swift brush strokes, moving across the whole model, focusing on elbows, knuckles, fingers, anything that sticks out. And also using the side of the brush to make sure I leave the recesses somewhat darker. And I hope for you guys it's also looking good, but from my end, seems like the video is the quality is really sharp. So many thanks to you, Kimberly, for running things so well. Seems like the there seems like for, to me when I also was looking at some of the checking in on some other streamers that the quality is even better. So noticeable improvement. And again, here, just following the irregular pattern of the bulges on the skin, just to ensure the raised areas are brighter. 
two adventures. Get raided. Oh, oh. Raiding party of 11. What is that? Welcome, raiders. That's cool. Something new. Eleven par party of eleven. That's that's a party to be rec to be well to be considered. So a bit more on the back side, and I'll just set it aside. Not going to mess with it too much. Move over to the to the other big guy. And his belly is looking too yellowish here. So I'll just selectively do the semi dry brush on the raised areas. And as you can see the yellow tint well, the yellow greenish tint because that's uh, that's a Nurgle color, so it's a slight, it's a mixture of, it's a very vivid green. It's a highly vivid green, which kind of I would define it as yellowish green. So it adds this warmth, and this warmth shows through even when I brush over it. So this is the stage of painting this beast, where I dare, I dare say it's starting to look more three-dimensional than it did half an hour ago. And it's a swift progress, because I just started from the base coat, and we are, are already getting some decent smooth highlights with multicolored mutated hints on the main part of the body so i would say it's a progress and also when i work on the back area i just try to navigate around the recesses again focusing on the raised areas and making sure that the color i use for this not to dry dry brush isn't very much different from the base color so it's essentially it's a brighter take on the base color the light currently reflects off of that but you get the idea i'm sure and i will also repeat myself for those of you who joined later that while working on creatures mutations and all the different crazy things that word has in its range versus painting humans you are just at more of a freedom where you get to choose okay this will be highlighted this way this is my take on it why don't these giants have a patch of green here whereas with painting kingdoms of course if you're a great artist you can play around with different levels of saturation like when you think of Perdita and her crew, the Ortegas, you can also ensure that their skin looks like it's been exposed to strong sunlight, sunlight, so you can saturate it differently. But then you're still maneuvering around realistic skin tone. And here you can just put aside the realism. And that's what I find so enticing about painting creatures, beasts, and all the nasty stuff. So now we'll get back to the first one and do a bit of more of highlights there. Just let it build up because it's a bright shade. It doesn't 
immediately become bright so now i'm more of stippling it then i will do a glaze to bring it together then i will work on the crystals which will be a, well compared to what i'm doing now it will be a painstakingly slow process so now i'm just tapping it with the edge of the brush so what i'm doing is just show you on my finger nail see this is the kind of pattern i'm leaving just some dots because thanks to the structure of the brush this will do look as if i had stippled it with a standard brush several times so again speeding things up while maintaining the quality because what i'm aiming for is not tabletop quality i want this model to look awesome so that's where the different glazes will come into play just to making this rich and saturated it's a little blurby yeah it's the shape of the model that is correct yeah it's yeah it looks like some you know some fat is rolling off the model just to compare it to a finished version it's just the anatomy of Gurion is well it's a mistake of nature well not nature but it's a mistake of Malifaux right mother nature when if mother nature was to look at Gurion as her child she would have a heart attack But you can already see that the shades are locked in, the highlights are beginning to show through. And this is the stage where I can start switching to a smaller brush gradually when I work on more limited surfaces of the miniature. Stippling some onto the forearm onto the well, blurby head It's just so much fun. And I'm not too worried if the highlights become a bit too non-discreet, if they are really showing through, because this will all be evened out with one or two targeted glazes over the whole area. And the glazes will be blue, light blue. Yeah, how's it looking? This is how it's looking. So this is gentleman number gent one and gent two. So it's looking like a more controlled mess. At least that's the intention to make it look like a mess, but with some thinking behind it some clarity on the next stages so now i will switch to a smaller brush and the area i'm sort of avoiding the area around those ice spikes because i want it to be more blue than the other parts of the body So halfway through the stream, it's around the half time now. So time to do something slightly differently, I guess. Now I will take bone white, just bone white. 
from Vallejo Game Color. And again, more of a stippling, dry brushing, mixture of both before I hit the miniature with a glaze or two. Too much, remove it with a fingertip, not too much. So I'm balancing between this dry brush and enough to be able to do some stippling. Because then those transitions from blue to white will be brought together by a few targeted glazes. I'm thinking two or three, and then I can work on the spikes and finish off with oils. Because my idea was also to show you guys some other technique that I haven't showed yet. And I like to use oils when I work on large beasts models. They get the, they allow you to get this really nice finish on the miniature. This it looks like it's well soft. I don't know really how to define it. It's it's a different finish than you get with acrylics, like the one here on the back. It's more maybe cartoony. So here, stippling more towards the eyes and the eyes and and it's three mouths i will paint separately once the glazing is done they will fit into the overall composition better that way because if i do them now whatever progress i make will be ruined when i start glazing because then it will be all brought together and i want the area around the heads to be a bit different So I've been talking a lot about playing Euripides. I faced Euripides once in a tournament setting. It was a mirror match and the lists were fairly similar, although mine had candy. No, mine didn't have candy. Mine had doppelganger, which I used to copy Foon's attack. And my opponent had Hinamatsu and Vasilisa and teleported them into my deployment first turn. I buried one of them with doppelganger and it was a game of burying and burying while both the damned were running across the board doing schemes and both Euripides were trying to do the same. It was like a tough game of chess where big pieces were moving around. I think I ended up winning it by a very narrow margin, like three to two or four to three or five to four. Can't remember the exact score, but it was a margin. The margin was absolutely minimal. And it all boiled down to last couple of activations. And no, I did have candy in that game. I did have candy and I did forget about her ability to, when a model gets stunned, she can push it or ping it for one damage. And my opponent actually activated Garion in, it was turn four or three. And Garion was, his Garion was on one wound. And I forgot about this ability. So what the Garion did, it was on one wound, surrounded by ice pillars, it reformed from ice, and it was back to full health. Games like Little Nightmares. Ah, there is, there are those uh, blurby giants in this game. I saw some clips of gameplay. It looks like a twisted, sick game. <laughs> looks fun. Like you have this tiny character wearing a yellowish rain cloak that's trying to escape a boat full of hungry, angry. Fat 
giants. And yeah, that I I can I can see where you're coming from. And also speaking of gaming, I, I had four games of Malifo already in 2022, which is a lot for me, given my professional family commitments. It's just really tough to squeeze in games. So really happy about those games, despite the fact that I lost <laughs> three of them. I'm still feeling positive about just being able to go out there and get a game or two in. Played two games with Zoraida, two games with Titania. I'm still using the OG versions. Have I I just don't like proxying and while in friendly games it's not an issue. I still feel like I need the original miniatures to really feel like I'm playing the new version. And this Saturday, I plan to go. I well, I've I have every intention in the world to go to a tournament, which is in Krakow. So it's like three hundred plus kilometers from where I live. So I'm going to go there by train, get up at four a.m. to be there for ten a.m. because I need to commute to Warsaw, and then get to the city where the tournament is there is going to be like 14 people which is a pretty solid turnout just fingers crossed there are no surprises because in recent weeks there have been cases of covid in my kids kindergarten and then it puts everyone at home well unless you're vaccinated so for me, it's not a problem because if I'm vaccinated, I can just move freely as long as no one from my direct family is affected with COVID. So things are still a bit chaotic. There doesn't seem to be much direction. So just, just hoping that the tournament happens and I'm able to be there. Knocking on wood. But having said that, I mean, Vassal is always an option to play a game, but I haven't given it a go. I just enjoy the three-dimensional aspect of the game too much, I guess, to resign from it. I do enjoy watching games on Vassal, though. It's good for, for background noise when I paint miniatures, and I get to see how people unpack their crews, how they use them, especially the good thing is that uh, a lot of really, really good players take part in those vassal leagues or tournaments, whatever it is, and you get to enjoy some top level action. I believe the Mali Forward series is going to be back, or it's already back, with people from across the whole world. Now I'm almost ready for the Glazing saturation part, well, stretching my neck a little bit. When I'm really locked into the zone, the painting zone, I tend to keep my head in one position and then it feels like your neck is not what it should be. I 
now I'll give a bit of a heavier overbrush of those spikes or maybe no maybe I will do that later I will do that later when it's closer to working on that specific area because now comes the tinting time so giving it a well a hint of blue across the whole surface so for this i will mix sapphire blue with quartz magenta so those two colors making sure why i'm mixing is that this purple the magenta color is slightly warmer than this blue so it will keep it well, can the ink. It will keep it vibrant and bluish while the magenta will counteract it. Sorry, just switch off the light mistake for a second. But notice that it's back in no time at all. So this mix now plenty of lemon medium to that to make sure it is diluted. And doesn't change because I'm not looking for a change I'm looking for saturation here so taking the big brush okay and this is this purplish maybe it's still too strong I need to dilute it further that's more like it more like it yes just a kind of color to bring it all together well you know what maybe i will just use more blue here i'll just go with tenebris blue and I've changed my mind. I don't want this kind of saturation. I want blue saturation. So I will go ahead and swap. I can always get back and reapply when needed, if needed. Still too strong. So the intensity ink Things, they are cool they are really great products because they have immediate impact but if you want to use them for glazing you really need to give them a proper treatment to thin them down so now it's becoming more alive and trust me in real world it looks even better than in the in the camera as things tend to look Those are creatures of live in high mountains, so snow is their natural habitat. And blue seems to be to me the color that goes so well with snowy peaks. But well, I'm not using a snowy base for these, I will be using like a tundra one with some different types of grass and predominantly brown. So this is the kind of saturation I'm going for now. And I just don't want it to pull on the miniature too much. I'm actually quite surprised I thought that in the streams it would be difficult for me to concentrate to process with the work but i'm just so locked in and focused on what i'm doing that i pr 
probably a bit faster than I would normally do because I just want to. Well, my my thinking is that if someone is joining the stream, they want to see some significant progress. So I'm trying also to choose the kind of models for which I can, while working on which I can just showcase some of the tips and tricks that I learned to use to some degree of efficiency. So I try to just finish any project I would be working on within one, maximum two streams. And having said that, it's still good that there are other painters around who have different approach. Because, for example, when you think about Ben and his really careful build up of patterns of material, and there are just lessons to be learned. Or Eleanor, who uses, who has mastered this use of white dotting as final highlight. So that her models are really, really eye-catching and look great at first glance already and look even better when you look and you zoom in on details. So that's, to my mind, that's the main advantage of having a range of painters doing the streams. Different skill sets and different well, different preferences. Probably if I was using airbrush, I would be already done with those miniatures. But I'm not an airbrush user. Never really was. I did give it a go a few times, but I just don't. Don't feel it. Don't feel comfortable using it. Seems like it's taking too much time to Prepare the paint, clean the airbrush, prepare the paint again, clean the airbrush again, disassemble it, paint it, clear it thoroughly. Just too much effort to enjoy it. Although I'm still hesitating and thinking that I might end up getting one just for base coating and pre-shading. Because that's that's pretty much as advanced as I can be with using airbrush. So now I'll be using the purple to just stain some selective areas. And this is just super smooth, very light saturation of purple. Because when you think about this gigant who never cleans itself, lives in the frosty mountains. So the skin would, well, how would the skin look like? I would assume that their skin is extremely thick to begin with. So they can weather those extreme conditions in the first place, but it's definitely something that would be that that, that would affect the look of the skin tremendously. Now I will use a bit darker purple to go into deeper into the recesses 
And for that, I think I will go with shyish purple. And I will also grab a smaller brush. I don't need such huge huge brush for that. Seems like I'm using a tiny brush if I'm using a medium sized brush now after working on those large sections of skin. So shyish purple mixed into the color I already have. And this will flow between the fingers into some crevices where I really want stronger shade before I continue working. Just I thin it down so that it flows easier. Just helps define the fingers better. And filling the spaces there. So before I continue here, I will just make sure that I do the areas between fingers on the other one as well. Maybe in between the heads to give a bit of more of shade between them. Some in the nostrils. Okay, okay. Now to the other face. And I'm also working on two on purpose just to show you guys some. Hopefully, ways that will help you switch efficiently between one and another. And also, when I work on both of them on two miniatures that use similar color scheme, I can just work on them simultaneously because when I work on one, the other one is drying. So I can go back and forth between the two models and just work more efficiently. So, to put it in context, if I was to paint them separately, it would take me the same amount of time for each, I would assume. So, if I assume that I paint them, well, with assembly, making the base and all the jazz within, let's say, seven hours each, seven, then I would say that for both of them simultaneously, I could go as much as maybe 10 hours total for both. Maybe less, I think less, I think closer to eight. It's also not about speed really, it's just one way of approaching it. I don't want to get to the point where I need to paint so fast that I that I stop enjoying the process because at the end of the day it's all about having fun while you're doing it. Although I recognize the fact that there are people who hate painting, so that's fine. You just don't know what you're missing, but that's fine. Probably one of the most psychologically soothing activity. Well, thank you on the construction paints. Those are freaky guys for sure. 
I will now switch to sign with red, put it in the middle of purples, and just use it to slightly tweak the areas around the face where I want the mutation to look like an inflammated skin. Maybe a touch here around the eye. Because this is where the stretch marks on the skin would get really visible. Maybe let some of it flow into the interior part of the mouth to start already tainting it towards reddish zone. This is a nasty looking model for sure. And not a little, it's quite a hefty piece compared to a standard human sized model in the world of Malifo. They are size three, I believe, in the game. Three or four. I would need to double check it. Let me have a look. Darian. Hmm. They are size. I'll wait while the app is loading. And while it's loading, may I just take a moment to give a shout out to Mr. DZ, who is the magician behind it. Mm, Darian. They just won't give me a peace of mind. Size three, yes. So not, well, not that much of a difference between Garion and human, just one in size. However, they are just bulky. So now I'm kind of framing the heads, but it's already looking pretty cool. Pretty cool, not to, no pun intended, right? Pretty cool ice giant. So when the inks is when the inks are drying, I can just reapply them to reestablish the reddish inside of the mouth, maybe around the eye socket. And the eyes, maybe I will use glowy yellow why not just to force in some diversification To the spikes now now or in a second or maybe i will do the faces first face first i think so for the face i have bone white which is good because it's this off white which is slightly darker than well it's more of brownish type of yellow type of off white and I will just pick a smaller brush and pick out the teeth on those. Because then when it's the more complex work on uh, painting the faces, then I will be using oils oh the noise you hear in the background is my little daughter waking up she tends to wake up around midnight every day and 
feels disoriented. But fortunately, the wife is around. And thanks to her, the stream continues. So thank you, wife. More teeth on this mouth. And you don't need to really go crazy with highlighting teeth. If you just use off-white, give it a glaze, repeat it with slightly brighter white. It looks great already. No point in really placing that many highlights on the area, which will not benefit from it so much anyway. So yes, it's a shortcut, but it's a shortcut that is not motivated by laziness, I would rather say highly pragmatic approach. So now I will also use Volubus Pink just to further put this different saturation to the internal part to the interior part of the mouth we'll keep it darker but it will add this nice pinkish shade I will also use it in the nostrils And more here, and more here, and yeah, and that's it. Now for the eyes. Let's start with red. <clears throat> Just putting it on my old CD, which serves the purpose of my go-to palette. Who uses CDs anyway, the physical discs? Not many people. And I, when I was a kid, I would have videos on VHS cassettes. So CDs were a phase. And when we started thinking that they'd save up space, then movies started being streamed on the internet so that felt good so the standard approach to painting demonic eyes is a dot of red, just a solid base coat of red, followed by a dot of yellow, then yellow mixed with white, and then a glaze of red, maybe not wash, red glaze, and that's it. That's a good looking demonic eye there already with such fast approach. This eye I want to make larger, so I made a larger dot. And the other one I will also make it larger than, than the texture of the eye actually is. Now yellow. We're all heading into the third hour of the stream, so maybe I will speed things up a little bit. If I want to do what I want to do. Because I want to show you guys how I use oil paints on 
large surfaces. So that let's say that if I don't get to finish what I want to do before 30 until 30 minutes are left, then I will just switch to oils directly. Because I tend to use oils at the final stage because these, when they are applied to the miniature, they need more time to dry properly. So I let them dry at least overnight before I varnish the miniature and do the final touches with brush. Okay, so red is locked in, yellow is there. While applying, I just want to make sure that at least some of the red shows through otherwise it just looks flat and i want it to look like a burning eye not a white eye or yellow eye so it needs layers to be visible and the transitions don't need to be they're just increasingly smaller dots well thick dots decreasing in size to put it in a different way so now this really fine brush a bit of white making sure that the yellow is still visible don't want to lose sight of yellow And, and a dot, and another dot. And... I will let it dry and in the meanwhile we'll just use Nasdaq yellow which is this slightly brownish yellow the fail of Molly for noble and ancient creatures <laughs> yes well, that's that's exactly the kind of sound I was thinking about that the Gurion would be making just something utterly horrific So the other set of teeth on another one. Now that I have yellow drying there, I will go ahead and apply a mix of white and off-white. So not pure white. I don't like using pure white for finish because it just has this cartoonish effect which I, I'm not after this effect, I'm after more gritty effect. And I feel like pure white would ruin my approach. And think about thief and monstrosities if you don't feel happy with the way the teeth look just flood it with blood for the blood god effect and you're good to go easy fix another hobby trick I think I might spread some of the white on the forehead here 
just using the fact that I have pure white just to indicate where I want some brighter spots to appear. And now time for red glaze into the eye socket. So again, applying too much of it on purpose literally flooding it with red because the idea is that red taints the area around it so while it's getting flooded with red i will move on to the other one flood these eye sockets with red because this will create this glow effect so literally takes a couple of minutes to get decent glow effects and now i will absorb the excess of red and the area around the eye socket is tinted with red so this is 101 on painting glowy red eyes see that's it it's that easy literally can take just a couple of minutes now speaking of easy things the next stage is not uh, difficult it's rather a bit tedious because what i'm going to be working on now is picking up all the spikes so this will take a while but it's not a problem i will just use an off-white color so ivory and now spikes so to make it more efficient i will just hold the miniature at one angle pick them all out from one angle then move on to another angle rotate the model just making sure i leave some of the base coat at the base of each spike because they will get proper wash treatment shortly so i think it's about 15 to 20 minutes for that and then we're moving to the fun part with oils there is this youtuber i can't remember his name now the first name is marco i think he's an italian guy living in ireland i believe so he has a distinctly italian lovely italian accent and he just uses simple techniques to create wonderful pieces so at the end of the video you see this masterpiece at first glance it looks like a masterpiece you don't know this the shortcuts he's employed to achieve the effect he has and he's really good with using oil washes he's using washes i will use oil slightly differently than he does although worth noting that there are different applications for the same material so again one angle at one go Sorry if I made it unclear for you guys. And then this will be given a wash of ethematic blue, which is this lovely bright blue. Maybe I will give it a quick dry brush of pure white just to pick up the tops of the tips of this each spike. Can you imagine an agrarian uh, one a conversation between two cultured agrarians well one is asking well dear friend how is your back and how can your back be if you lie on your back and there are spikes protruding from it so those are creatures that just are doomed to be angry and in pain all the time makes you kind of feel for them never happy always in pain but 
but then you don't feel the sympathy when it when a creature like that stands in your way you just feel feel an urge to run fast and far Yeah, this is the part where you don't want to speed it up too much because it's easy to just apply pure white where you don't want it to be well it's not pure white but compared to the colors around it it may be perceived as pure white because those are like spikes or tiny ice crystals at least that's how i approach it as small ice crystals being formed on this frost mutated giant and it takes a while to get them all in so i think that the I heard an interview with a great sportsman. What makes a difference between a great sportsman and a good sportsman is that consistency, just the ability to go out there and keep at it. And I think the same can be said about painters. And I, by all means, I don't consider myself a great painter. It's about good craftsmanship that you really go out there and day in, day out, you land a few brush strokes just to improve the core skill set and based on that you can just start feeling comfortable enough to use some kind of shortcuts to get very decent effects without that much effort and great effects with <laughs> with effort still so now i'm using a different angle just to make sure i cover the whole surface of each of these crystal crystals ice crystals whatever that is so really taking my time to move things around eight minutes in so at least at least 10 minutes for each set of crystals as i said this is the most time consuming part because you need to be really in control of where the brush strokes hit the miniature because for good effect you want to make sure that not the whole crystal is covered with white you want to leave some space between the skin and the crystal because otherwise it will look like it's glued onto the back rather than protruding from the back growing out of it because properly applied wash will just make it look like a more unified piece Sorry for not the most convenient angle, but you do what you get to do to reach them. And it looks bad at this point. It look, looks like, uh, like they've been stapled onto him rather than growing out of him. But we will get around to fixing that. So now I'm rotating it, hitting it from a different angle. And just finding spaces where there is too much of the base coat showing through because i want each of them to be two-thirds white And 
and here I left a spot which I don't like where it impacts the area around the spike so I'll just quickly grab the base coat and just swish it over there that's better now 10 minutes in 11 minutes in let's see how fast it takes me to get the spikes down on the other one spikes crystals still can't make up my mind what those actually are something ice ice something actually looks like this one has fewer of them but they are a bit larger so comparable amount of work to get them then So this is this deep focus stage where you just slowly work your way through considerable section. And you can take it even slower. You can do gradual highlights, transitions here, but I will do something that is Good looking and com well, rather fast. Because the goal is to maintain the right proportions of base and quality. Ooh, and the same about toenails. They can get similar treatment because why not? So I'll just pick them out. I'll pick them up on this one. Not much really to do here. This one looks like it's got Berto's without finger nails. Oh, and fingernail here as well. And the clenched fist. How about here? Also one barely visible. But there, for sure, here as well, two of them actually. Make sure that they don't blend in. You don't want two fingernails blending together if you're after some kind of effect there. So almost halfway through. So at this point, I'm already considering my the content of my next video stream, painting stream. I think maybe something from the Arcanist faction. Not sure yet. Maybe I will do a vote, a poll, or maybe some core work. Because I want to devote one stream to preparing the bases base coating well maybe not base coating assembling the miniatures because there are a few tips and tricks that i would also like to share with you guys about how to assemble the miniatures so that you, you don't need to use any extra resources for filling up the gaps that can be the result of not greatest process
some more spikes that's almost done and yeah maybe maybe it will even take me less than 20 minutes which i which was my rough estimate and this is really nice how purple blends in with blue here in the armpit section so you get this smooth transition to where the skin could be naturally darker as it's less exposed to well sunlight or frost in this case it's good remembering about how exposed the skin gets to the environment when you work on different areas of it So now time for the ice ice spikes or ice ice crystals and I'm looking for athelmatic blue now giving it a solid shake you know what maybe maybe I may just do one more thing before I move there I will just give it a an overbrush with white. Just take my dry brushing brush. Dry brushing brush. And just using the side of it, just go over the tips of those crystals. This will not make a world of difference but when the contrast paint catches on, it will facilitate this look of gradual transition. Yep. That's enough, I believe. Now for the crystals, I will probably grab a different brush, one that absorbs a bit more paint. No need to use the best brush now, but just one that can reliably hold a bit more paint. Maybe this one, as long as it's not too soft. And what I will be doing now is I will just submerging it in paint and then just letting the paint flow of it flow off of it onto the white spike or crystal and I want the area around it to be slightly tinted with it so I'm fine overdoing it slightly Moving it upside down just to make sure I get them all from all angles. 
and I can just touch it lightly with the tip of my with my fingertip to remove the paint from the tips. That way it will stay pure white. So this transition will be complete from light blue to white. And also I'm being a bit more generous here with the glaze because now it's the it's actually one of my favorite contrast paints. I like how it interacts with different surfaces, different colors. It's this light turquoise that's quite quite versatile in its application. Good for all kinds of magical effects. I think I used it for those spell effects around the, what you call them, spell eaters. And here I'm just even pushing it a bit more to give this kind of semi-glow effect. So if I was to summarize how it looks in four words, I would say, that's pretty cool. Yes, it looks like some ice crystals are really growing out of his back. His or her, to be honest, right? We don't really know the sex of those creatures. So spikes growing out of their back just to be on the safe side. You don't want to offend a lady if it's a lady. So I think that this allows those crystals to be really well incorporated into the overall composition. So I'll just have a few turns, make sure I don't miss out on any. And I did miss out on the fingernails and the toenails. He's like, my back aches and my fingers are sore. Why is everything made out of ice? I better smash things to make myself feel better. That might be the mindset. Who knows? So again, switching to the other Garion, just to speed up painting process. I've in my painting career I've painted crystal looking gray. They were so white at first they look kind of like bones or teeth. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. That's that's why I when I paint them, I made sure that the wood go all the way to the skin area and that way the excess of athematic glue forms a kind of kind of glow a kind of pool around them which makes it look like it's some kind of ice formation that for whatever unnatural or magical reasons took place there and settled in and athematic blue is a great great color for such purposes, for magical effects. That's my, I would say my go-to color, unless I'm painting fire. And also one thing I didn't mention while talking about Euripides, I haven't had a chance to play or as or against the second version of Euripides. And I read some exciting comments about how great he can be 
and well I see the merit of his abilities like turning all markers within specific area removing them and turning them into ice pillars that can ruin a day for a crew that depends that relies heavily on the use of markers so it can be a great tech pick and something that the Neverborn don't currently have well also that's a great miniature this huge one-eyed giant but it's you know it's always whenever there is a new model and you can get excited about it abilities and so on and so forth but until you've faced it or you played it it's really just speculation on how good it would be unless there is some design mistake which allows it to be too good and that is noticed without gaming can which i assume can happen so getting closer to the final stage of the stream so the final stretch in the last 30 minutes of three hour stretch let me fill in my yerba need some boost So let me put them side by side to show you where, where I am and where I want to be. And with those contrast paints, you need to really make sure you lock them up properly. So this is where I am and this is where I want to be. So there you can see there's this additional layer of smoothness to this guy here, right? And this one doesn't have it yet. Although when you look at the back, it's kind of getting there. And I want to achieve it with the use of oil paints. So my next trick is going to be the oil paints. And for that, I might, this will serve its purpose well. And this will be my, or maybe I will just be fancy and do it the old fashioned way. <clears throat> so I will use my metal palettes and I will start with bright blue. So I will use these two oil brushes. <clears throat> I think I will mix in, mix them in on the palette. Just apply some, it makes a funny sound. It sounds like uh, Garyon's fist meeting human flesh. Just taking out some of it on the palette. And then I will mix the oil with white oil paint. And the oils have this incredible property that they don't dry fast and they can be used for making smooth transitions effectively. So I'll start with making, <laughs> I'll be fancy. Well, I try to look at it as being practical, maybe rather, maybe fancy is not the right word. So I will use this brush for, I, I need one brush for application and the other for smoothing it so let me grab this one for application so for application i will use this one for smoothing this one and let me just mix it so that i have this very light oil blue paint and what i do is just have a look here at the forearm looks awful doesn't it why would i do such bad contrast I'm just pressing it against the most protruding area the most raised areas because in a moment I will start working it so now I will just spread it over the surface just making sure I don't apply too much and it will become 
it will just naturally change the hue and saturation of this part that I'm working on. Maybe this one splits splits her too much, so I will use this one. So I'm just kind of massaging the model with the tip of the brush. I will work on the shades in a second. Oh, we still have plenty of time. So you know what? I will make it even brighter. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I yeah, they are great. They are great because it's they are easy to keep in one place. The containers are for them are amazing, super thin and don't take up much space. So now I'm using almost pure white. Just wanted you guys to see a technique which is maybe not very common, but which will make a world of difference. So I'm not using it on the whole miniatures because while they do dry much slower, well, they dry. I don't want large spots of oil paints on the miniature before I tackle it. So here are the dots. And now just using very lightly, you see they just form this natural transition from the base color to bright color. And this is such a nice hobby trick. It's such an incredible time saver when you want to have this smooth transition from blue to white on the most protruding elements. I will still, after varnishing, I will still get back to those areas and repick them with a highlight or two, just a dot or two with standard paint, but for now, I'm just, you see, it's already made a, made a quite an impact. So I'll be focusing on, for example, one arm, not more, not, not going beyond one arm before I transition to the other arm because it dries and you have then those highly visible spots. And why would you want them? You have a bit of control. You can direct the highlights to one specific area or another, just lightly tweaking it. The knuckles, again, the muscles here. It's like filtering, but different type of filtering. So the other arm now, and then I will let purple into the, the recesses just to create some nice contrast there. But here I'm being just very careful not to apply too much of it. Because it's easy to overdo it. And when you overdo it, it's still interesting, but maybe not the most desirable outcome. And yeah, you can say I'm lazy because I don't want to do those super smooth gradual transitions, but I'm thinking of it proactively lazy versus lazy lazy. So call it what you will, but well, as long as the final effect is good, doesn't really matter how you got there, right? So here, just pure white, just to reinforce. This will be a brighter section. There it is. Okay. 
and when I wanted to experiment with those oil brushers, I thought, well, how many I should buy? Maybe I will buy one or two, and I bought like 20 of them. And I've been using them ever since, but I think I switch to them when I work on larger projects like this one is definitely a good example where I can really benefit from the properties of oil paints and their capacity to just naturally transition an area from darker to brighter or the other work or the other way around. If you make a small dot, you just push it and pull it over the surface, just drag it. Like here, you can see the right form. It looks really good when the transition from white smooth with those simple steps. You have the blue, the white, gently spread it. Very gently spread it. And you have this nice transition to white, which looks super smooth. And it would take you a uh, well, several layers of paint, watching carefully the consistency, which is perfectly fine. I'm not saying it's a wrong technique, but I'm just trying to share with you guys a trick that will make your life easier if you want to get really nice smooth highlights without spending several hours on them, which is fine. If you want to do it, do it. Do it. Well, proper butt treatment for highlights there. And again, a small dot here, small dot. Still not happy with those front. dots and then approach it very very lightly just spread it around and this creates this transition the same for the elbow i think i want more work done here and here and on the muscle so i'm just putting a small dot and spreading it removing the excess of oil paint on the tissue now the disadvantage is that currently I'm not able to interact with those highlights using acrylic paints. But once it's dry and varnished, I can go back and repeat any areas I might want. Maybe a bit more work on this guy. I will spend the rest of the stream just going back and forth with white and then hopefully We'll manage to get some purple in for the final stages in the deepest crevices. And it's a good idea to start with brighter. And then you need white spirits or enamel odorless thinner to clean your paints, to clean your brushes that you use for oil paints, because otherwise they will be completely ruined. It's 
so the, you can see the effects on the back it's really looking looking good at this point looking how i would like it to look now the the other big guy hello beautiful let's put some glow on you and this all okay this is also a technique that i've seen people use it on youtube for glow around the visors of space marine helmets and while i am not a big fan of space marine just not my cup of tea for not much use of it for Mali for although you have some models with helmets like beam and calypso so there is some apl potential application of it there as well so look at how bad it looks like at this point and look away for two minutes and look back and it will look awesome that's the beauty of it simple trick that enables you to get really really lovely effects and i'm by no means affiliated with oil brushers or the company that produces them i think i, I just use them because they were available at the store where I order my painting stuff. But I reckon any kind of oil paints could be used. Just be gentle when you spread it. Because if you do it too heavily, you will just spread it so that it just, there is no highlight. It will just disappear. And you want the effect to be there. The smooth transition where the top area the most raised area is highlighted and the area around it is still brighter but not bright bright there is one muscle another flabby muscle there is a bit too much of oil brush but i will just spread it around carefully and i won't be tweaking it much more tonight i just want to make sure it dries before morning i maybe i will just speed up a little bit to just make sure you guys see how it will work combined with darker shade of purple in the recesses we still have like 15 minutes to go but it's already looking really really much smoother and i mean you can get smoothness with airbrush. You can get smoothness with standard brushwork with acrylics. But this is a way, well, not if you can't get it, but just another way of achieving effect. So as an adventurous painter who likes experimenting with different techniques, when I saw it on YouTube and some, I saw some guys doing it so well i just thought well might give it a shot and it's not really difficult and again look you see some ugly white dots yes filters for highlights that's it that's it and now those dots you can just twirl the you can just use the Think of it like as if you're brushing your teeth. If you don't have electric brush, this is how you would do it. You would do it. You would rotate your toothbrush. So that's how you do it. And you affect the whole area and the top is brightest. And it looks super smooth in the end. So this is a technique I learned thanks to the fact that some people were nice enough to share it on YouTube. So. What can I do? I can just spread the good word, sp spread the painting gospel and show you guys something that I find effective. Hopefully it will be useful for some of you. If not, then it's just something worth, worth considering, worth experimenting with.
still not fully happy with this one so i will just put a few more dots on the forearm and garion and generally this type of models are you see so i'm just immediately fixing it fixing where i felt that there wasn't enough of a transition garion are good models for playing with this technique because they are such chaotic mass of different elements that you don't need to be extremely careful about misplacing a highlight there because at the end of the day it's just a mass of mutated flesh so if the highlight isn't at a perfect area it's fine might as well be there okay so some localized filters on the head just to push it a bit further make it look a bit more visible you can filter it with yellow with white with red when you want to have this area that looks like it's been stretched more and suffered more as a result it's just fun right so we have about 10 more minutes to go so why don't i go to the space purple and i will use the old brusher directly without putting it on my aluminium palette oh it's i think that the top broke a little bit but still usable no i think i will still put it on the palette because i want a thinner brush to apply it directly into the recesses so i will use a brush that i won't feel unhappy about if it becomes damaged so i will use just the same brush that i used for the application of bright blue so now guys check this out purple armpit a dot here a dot here dot in those stretch marks and let's just spread it over this area probably should have switched the brush but as you can see it's just tinting it with nice purple gradient which would take a lot a lot of time to build up so i really hope that this is a technique that someone finds interesting or at least worth considering just add it to your painting repertoire and try something new just this is this is what makes it fun right different techniques different strokes for different folks So again, deep recesses between the muscles, between the muscles, middle of clenched fist, front here just for some more complex look, little bit on the head, closer to the back. I might go with red over there, I might not, I don't know. That's the beauty of it. I can just adjust on the fly and look how nicely it, it works like magic on human skin as well, or just slightly demonic skin. It just adds such a nice filter of purple. And it's so fast, right? It would take five more hours minimum if I was to do it with brush, with standard approach. And right now you have this nice knock to the neverborn side of things because, because we're the purple guys, right? 
shout out to all the never bomb players watching it and this faction needs some love in the errata i just hope for some love for especially for bad juju so that it's bad not bad for the opponent not for, not for the player controlling it it needs terrifying or flurry and then i'm good to use it because if it doesn't have any of those i'm just more willing to use hinamatsu okay and one more area that could really benefit from this additional purple of course between the fingers on both hands I'm just putting, pushing purple into the recesses and now working it in that's my transition and it all of a sudden becomes much more three-dimensional have some of it on the brush so I just push a bit further into the recesses maybe also a bit here so it just let me think about it it's such a big intimidating miniature and throughout the course of this well, three hour stream I've been able to make some really really significant progress of it and make it look already weird. I may add some black splatter effects on its feet. Or I may not. It's a bit like this powder. Now if I can hit that. Oh, sorry about that. Can't really do anything about smite from my end. Hopefully something can be fixed. So for the final five minutes let me just push some purple contrast on this guy. This will be that's the end of it. This will be a wrap in in a few minutes. But I just want you guys to to see how purple something from the other ugly guy already is too late Those purple dots, they don't look perfect. Right now, working on it, pushing it in very gently, squeezing it into the recesses, and the cool thing is that it works into the recesses, it slightly pins the area around it. And what you get as a result is this, is this super super smooth transition. Yeah, that is burnt. Hmm. That is fun. That's not good to know. I'm sure we'll make it work better next time. But thank you so much guys for those of you who decided to join and spend being part of the stream always great to get some activity that's what really keeps me motivated and i'd be happy to order more mint sausages for you guys to see the progress i will keep on pushing the purple a bit more into the recesses we have literally only a few minutes to go to use more, more of them. I haven't used them in a while and so that's how much fun it is. 
I just use my finger to remove the excess from the raised area. Make a couple minutes left, and then I, I will keep on painting because don't see much point of stopping now since I have everything set up and it's also only midnight here. Plenty of the night is still long. Painting can go on. I'm full of yerba mate, so I'm energized for this half an hour more to continue. But I will do it offline. So next time around, not sure yet what I will be painting or assembling or just showing some more tips and tricks with you guys. But I'm already looking forward to it. For now it's almost the end. I may add some black splatter on the fish. I may add some tusks on the base. But those are things that I don't feel like worthwhile spending a separate stream on just doing the final touches. So I will most likely do it over like maybe the next couple of days when I have some spare time. And the picture will be shared on word forums. So big shout out to the painters challenge there. Have a peek at it. Great source of motivation if you want to make some progress on your miniature backlog or on your pile of possibilities, as some call it. So let me just show you what I've done. I think it's just worth noting that I started from scratch, so for the base project is like a bit of sand. They are painted already, more than that, they look pretty awesome, I would say. Still angry imitated diamond. Jack has nicely defined features, the transition color, thanks to the use of oil paint, the transitions between the recesses and raised areas have been smoothed out as much as I could over the span of those two hours. Oh yeah, thank you for sharing. This is the painter challenge. Make sure you check it out. Some really, really impressive painters there. And people having fun. People having fun and making sure they make progress with the hobby. It's just a good incentive to keep on painting. Uh, so, make sure you check out the stream. Tomorrow, I think I have a quick look. I believe it's Ben tomorrow. Just want to give a shout out to my fellow painter. Uh, quick shout out to Chad Boya. Where are you? Here we are. So, tomorrow is Ben of Ashen Hold Out working on Waxing. Ben is Eleanor on Thursday working on hidden alliances. So, new, potentially the new Ivan or new Mikachi. And then it's Funfet with MG on Thursday. Check those guys out. And it's a wrap for me. Thank you for sticking by and until the next time. Take care guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.